Hello guys and welcome to the February update for 2022. This February update is going to be basically the numbers for the first month of January. The first month of 2022, the data is in and we can see how 2022 is going so far. My name is Rodan and I'm a banker and property investor here in the UK. Let's get straight into this. So December to January, how have we done? Between December and January, we've seen a 0.3% increase in the value of properties in the UK. And if you saw my last two videos, my last two videos in January and December, we talked about how the period from basically November to February is a low. It's a period of slow growth um, in the UK property market. And things tend to take off from around February onwards. That's when you see the growth in the property market in this country um, almost every single year. So right now we're at that low period. And why are we going through this low period? Because we're coming out of Christmas basically guys. People like to take it easy, get their New Year's resolutions together, fail them by the end of the month, and then start the year properly in February. So February onwards is when I expect to see the property market start to pick up some steam. Now I did a poll not so long ago and I saw that 71% of you guys um, are planning to buy a property this year, this year. So tell me in the comment section below, are you in the process of buying a property right now or are you one of the wider masses of people who tend to start that process from February onwards? So let me know in the comment section below. So in my last video, we focused on demand and supply. We saw that last year was really the year of unprecedented demand and that's why not just last year to be honest the last um, 19 months now since lockdown started was driven and fueled by demand and demand was as a result of the stamp duty holiday it was a result of the search for space and the various government schemes that came into play now the reason why prices skyrocketed over the last 19 months was because in parallel to that was a really short supply and we saw in detail in the last video if you haven't seen it, give it a watch guys it's really useful i've time stamped the relevant sections but essentially supply has been low for two main reasons according to the media and that is that people are hesitant to put their properties large numbers of people are hesitant to put their properties on the market due to uncertainty around covid people would rather wait it out people in general are hesitant to get involved in you know large life-changing transactions life-changing decisions when there's uncertainty around them so it's understandable so you had the uncertainty around covid and also also and i'll be honest guys i still struggle to compute this one but because the market was moving so quickly over the last 12 to 18 months. And by quickly, I mean demand is so high, people were literally putting their properties on the market and they were being snapped up. So sellers were basically of the mindset that if I put my property on the market and it gets snapped up in two weeks, I'm not gonna have time. I'm not gonna have the time to find another property to live in because everyone's gotta live somewhere after they sell their property. And that was a genuine reason that a lot of these articles wrote and again you can see them in my last video but guys let me know what you think about that do you think that's a genuine root cause reason why we have a chronic really under supply of houses in the uk because i'm of the opinion that these things can be people aren't silly people are sensible these things can be planned around but i digress let's come back to these stats as i said um, this year, I believe that demand will continue, not so much at the level that it was over the last 18 months, but I do believe demand demand will continue into 2022. And I also said that supply was key for this year. So let's see how we're doing with supply. Now, if we look at the average asking price trend here on screen right now, this is one of the proxies, one of the indicators of demand. Basically, the steeper the curve, the higher the growth in the asking price indicates that demand is healthy. And I told you guys, at the beginning of this video october to january february is a low period every year in the uk property market so it's hard to make any real insights any real inferences from this period here because this is what happens every year what will be more interesting is what happens from february onwards and if you take a look at this top graph here this is the long-term view you can see quite clearly again i love looking at long-term views this is the same graph but just over the course of five years instead of of one year but from January 2020 onwards look how steep that curve gets we've been in a boom phase 
um, in our property market really since COVID began, which completely went against the expectations of um, the experts, so-called experts. I'm doing that in inverted commas right now with my fingers in air quotes. You can't see me, but I'm doing it. People thought it would be the exact opposite, but UK property has been in a boom phase. And then also let's take a look at the average time to secure a buyer. Again, this is the second indication of demand. We've been hovering around about between 36 and 39 days since June last year. And if you go back to January 20. 21 at its highest when it was 65 days you can see that steadily 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 that decrease down to 38 that means that basically um, buyers are being found much quicker therefore there's more demand for properties you can put a property on the market and whereas it used to take 65 days almost or just over two months it's taken just over a month on average so there's high demand for property and we've stayed at this quicker shorter window to sell a property for almost seven months so that demand that demand that healthy demand is staying around this level so now let's look at stock now as we said it's going to be interesting to see what happens with stock there was a record low stock over the last 12 months and if you have a look at the number for december we've actually gone even lower um to 42 so that's the lowest that it's been in a whole year less property about to sell now i initially thought that the reason behind this undersupply in the uk was narrowed down and focused on the global pandemic period however having done research into this um, it's become really clear that this is a long term a long term issue that dates all the way back to the 70s and beyond and shout out to these people on screen who've left comments on my other videos saying this also love it when you guys interact and leave comments um, definitely helps uh, focus some of the research I do and gives me topics to talk about in my subsequent videos. So this article that you can see on screen right now really does break down uh, the history. I'm going to show you another article in a sec, but this summarizes it really well. Um, points one, two and three really relate to government policy historic government policy on how houses are built and who does it and how that's led to an undersupply and then lastly point four um the deregulation of the uk financial sector that i work in so i'm going to flick on to another article that really explains points one two and three a lot better and a lot more concisely so we can see here starting from the first paragraph that social housing in the uk really began after the war in 1919 and it was led by councils then going on to the second paragraph we can see that after the second world war there was an issue in the country of private rented slums so that was apparently an issue back then um, the destruction of the war if you ask your grandparents or even your parents and um, they'll tell you that a lot of the infrastructure and the housing in the uk was actually destroyed there were literally bombs being dropped on London and different parts of the UK and a need to house um, soldiers who were coming back from the war. So off the back of that, they set out this big vision, this big program to build um, affordable houses in the UK. So that was in the 40s, um, World War II. And if we fast forward to the 1980s, a shift in social housing policy. Margaret Thatcher, who was our Prime Minister back then, she was really keen, she was a Conservative, and she introduced this idea in the UK that's still prevalent today, by the way, that we should own our own houses. So she introduced the right to buy scheme, which basically mandates that as long as you fulfill the criteria, that if you've been living in social housing, you have the right to buy it at a deep, discount it's a great scheme that if you're you know on a low wage and you live in a council or social housing right now you should really look into it so she introduces this right to buy scheme and at the same time through policy and legislation takes away powers and resources that local authorities or your local governments had to build houses and by 1983 the level of building of new houses had halved through this policy that came in in the 80s and then in 1988 they tried to U-turn on this by handing over really the resources and responsibility for the main responsibility and resources, not all of it. But basically, they tried to encourage housing associations rather than councils um, to, to, to build the houses. But we can see in the last two paragraphs that really, by and large, they have failed to do that. And then the global health pandemic comes along in March 2020 and really heavily exacerbates a long-term issue that's been going on really since the 80s. It's like pushing a sick hospital patient out of bed, right? You know, the, the, the building rate of housing in the UK was already down and then COVID comes along. You see all sorts of global issues to do with jobs, um, supply chains, 
and it really just makes uh, an already bad situation even worse. So this is a long-term issue in this country. So bringing it back to you know this video, what's going to happen with the housing supply in the UK? Well, we're going to have to wait and see. We do know that you know the worst of COVID, and I say this with all of my fingers and toes crossed, um, is over. And you know, job markets, labor markets, supply chains are beginning to go back to normal. And most importantly, government rules around the whole pandemic are starting to relax. So society and the economy as a whole uh, can go back to normal because really it's all been disrupted by the actions of the government, right or wrong, whatever you believe. We need, we really need those rules to be relaxed in order for all of our economy and our markets, including the housing market, to go back to normal and for supply to have a chance of recovering. However, are we going to, in a grander scheme, be able to meet that yearly yearly target of 300,000 homes per year when we haven't for four decades now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And then lastly guys, let's look at what's happening in the regions for the past month. Really, Southwest and the Northeast are driving um, the, the, the slight 0.3% growth during January. Most of the other regions of the UK are very, very slightly negative, but fully expect, um, you know, that to shift towards green as we get towards the end of Q1 and going to Q2 of this year. So that's today's video, guys. Um, I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Check out my property dashboard. This is the dashboard that I use when I'm investing in property and I want to calculate comparables, my returns, um, the annual profits that I'm going to make and so on and so forth. Check out the link is in the description below and I'll see you guys soon.